Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Bandai's DXVF31A Kairos figure as seen in Macross Delta. This toy was released in March 2018 for 21,000 yen. It was a Tamashi website exclusive. Usually this is the point in a review where I say go check out Big Bad Toy Store for your toy needs. There, it's less true of any Macross release, and it is particularly less true of this release, where there's pretty much no store that has these for sale. Just a month after release, they were pretty much immediately sold out. Rumor was that Bandai cut the production volume or cut the amount that any particular address could get. Whatever the reason why, this toy is very hard to come by, and the price is skyrocketing on the secondary market. Once you do get your hands on one, you'll find it's just like any other VF31 toy from the box perspective. It's a attractive box. You flip open the first lid and you find a faux second lid underneath that says remove before flight. Go ahead and pull that little cardboard lid out and you'll find the toy tucked in a styrofoam tray with the accessories underneath their own little lid. Once you pull the accessories out, you'll find there's six pairs of fixed posed hands. There's a second seat cover. I'll talk about that in a moment here. There's a replacement head laser. There's a pilot figure and two daggers. Once you pull out that styrofoam tray, you find a plastic clamshell underneath that contains the display stand with the three adapters, one for each mode. And underneath that clamshell, you'll find the instructions. The Kairos isn't just another VF31 toy. It has some differences. Among them, the silhouette that mimics what we saw with the YF30. So this is the YF30 Kronos. It has pretty unique silhouette to it. Very attractive. I love the toy, but the toy had some compromises in Gearwalk in Batroid mode. Mainly, it needed some brackets to exist. The VF31 toys got rid of any brackets and were solid all around. Kairos keeps all of those good things while now having more of a military look and that those beautiful lines that we saw on the Chrono. So here we go. It's got a little bit larger canards. So these are a little bit larger than you saw on the FJ, whatever, the Siegfried toys. It does have different sensors up at the front. So I can pull this up forward here and you can see there's the sensors right up in here versus the sensors there. So slight differences. You could also see the cockpit on my Kairos a little less frosted, which is a good thing, of course. And then the other big difference on the front here, the little kibble next to the head on the Siegfried toys, it flips open, giving the head room to pop out. On the Kairos toys, it doesn't need to move anywhere. It's a little bit thicker and more blunt. Obviously, swept wings on the Siegfrieds, solid wings going back on the Kairos, which is very attractive. Now, the other big difference we have here, there's a cool gimmick on these toys, Siegfried or Kairos, that allows you to pull up on the back of the leg here and separate a little trap door. You can then either pivot it upward or slide it forward. We'll slide it forward here. And on the Kairos toys, you've got missiles in there now, which is really cool. Whereas on the Siegfried toys, if I pop that open the same way, and pull that forward, there's these multi-drones that we see the Delta girls using Wakir using to great effect through the series. So uh, Siegfried toys, a uh, little more Delta centric, Kairos toys, much more military vehicles. So that's going to have a lot of appeal to people that were kind of turned off by the plot of Delta. For those of you less familiar with the DX VF31 toy, it does have a lot of cool gimmicks to it, of which include these removable covers on the intake here. So we can pop this free and show the intake fan within there. So there they are. You do have an articulated tow bar on the front, rubber wheels obviously on a metal shaft there. Coming up to the cockpit area, it does open up, just lift straight up and then pivot back. You do have a pilot figure with the Kairos. This pilot figure is just a repaint of the Messer pilot figure. This is what he looks like. So 
fairly attractive, looks good enough, and just fits right in. Now, unlike the Siegfried toys, which normally come with this seat folded forward and a cover here, the cover is in your bag of accessories and it just plops on top. There's nothing special about it. It's a little odd though, because there is no co-pilot figure included with the Kairos like there are with other figures. So you would think that they would just ship it in the one seat configuration. I'm sure there's a good reason for that. Maybe some commenter will let me know. Now my gripe with these toys has often been the landing gear decision, which is a Kawamari problem, not a Bandai problem. The rubber wheels though, they tend to rub on that knee housing that they're included on. And obviously that's not a very attractive landing gear, but you know, bottom of the toy, not a huge deal. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Now, uh, another thing to point out while we're here, look at all the beautiful Tampo printing just all over this vehicle. It is very well done, very attractive. Now, unlike other VF31 toys, this nose is painted. I'm not sure about the actual tip of the nose, but this area is painted. So during transformation, that can be a little bit concerning. So that might be a durability issue. I do have a little bit more pronounced line between the cockpit area and the nose cone itself. So uh, not sure if that's a little QC issue. It's not so bad that it really bothers me, but it is a little more prevalent. It also might just be, uh, again, it, this is white bright plastic on the VF31 toys and here we have kind of a dull gray. So maybe that's accentuating that line. This line right here is another frequent issue for VF31 toys. Not so bad on mine. I did have to transform it once when I first got the toy. This was a much bigger gap. After transforming it and settling everything in, uh, it worked out much better. So overall fighter mode, great lines, great detail work, and the gimmicks you would hope for from a high-end toy. And the display stand that comes with this toy is no surprise. It's been the same display stand that Bandai has been using since I believe the VF171 uh, DX Frontier release. So nothing exciting, no pivot points, no articulation, just a base that's pretty sturdy and an adapter. You take your Kairos toy, and I wanted to show you the landing gear here, the rear landing gear. They do have a little twist to them. And we just take it and twist it around like so. And then we can bring the kneecap forward and push that back. And that's how you get the kneecap in position. Now you might be looking at it like this and being like, hey, if this thing shoots its gun, it's just gonna blow the crotch off of Batroid mode, uh, which is true. But there's a cool little gimmick here that allows us to pull up on the back of the toy and unpeg the front. And then you can get a nice flat gun that actually clears the little belly area there. So that very cool little gimmick. And then the adapter, it fits on pretty solidly. Uh, it goes right over what is the crotch in Batroid mode. And then you'll see that it kind of clips in on these leg ports here. Uh, and then it's very sturdy. So there is your toy in fighter mode on the display stand. Like I said, no pivot points. It's gotta be this angle. That's the only option. Uh, looks good though. Uh, the toy itself looks good. The display stand, not so much. Uh, and at least it's stable. So that's what the display stand brings to it. Little shameless self plug. I do have transformation guides to go from fighter mode to Batroid mode. I also have Batroid mode back to fighter mode. And I have a full scan of the instructions up on anymoon.com. So if you're stuck at anything, check that out. And it's a great way to kind of get a glimpse at the engineering that goes into this toy. And Gearwalk mode really benefits from that engineering. We have these twist points behind the hip. And we have extensions at the knee that let us come way down and come way forward. That's a very aggressive sweep on the forward knee there. And then we have that twist point there too. So we can get these really aggressive gear walk poses. And then moving down to the foot, we have the ability to come as kind of normal Batroid mode, but then we can bring it all the way back to just insane levels of sweep. So you can actually bring the knee all the way forward, bring the foot forward like so. Uh, and it's gonna actually work out for you. And that is really cool. And you can see a lot of good metal content in there. The metal in this toy is just primarily the feet, and maybe a couple joints, but that's about it. It feels solid, no doubt about it. 
but it's not like there are metal body panels anywhere. So now you also get the ability to bring the foot in and out like so and twist at the foot. So great articulation there. You have this gear walk mode, which I think is kind of your, this is how it would look in Macross Delta. You've got the backpack fully out and extended. You can pop the gun off. I'm gonna show you that in Batroid mode, as well as the fixed posed hands it comes with and the daggers, we'll go through that in a little bit. You do have the option to swing these guns out forward from the forearm, which is pretty cool and gives you some more, uh, some more dynamic poses available to you, some more fun factor really for your display case. And if we wanted to, we can go ahead and we can collapse this, we can bring this part in, uh, we can bring the gun up and we can bring this together. Let's close that all up properly. So we can bring this together. We can bring the gun back in, push this part in, peg it in. And then we could take this and just bring that back and you can get kind of a more traditional looking gear walk mode as well. No problem in doing that. Uh, you could of course detach the gun and put the gun in the toy's hand right now and have a traditional gear walk mode with a gun as well. So overall, gear walk mode is a ton of fun. Let's grab the display stand and see how it looks. So here is the toy on the display stand. Now one weird thing worth noting, this is a multi-drone charger up here, but we saw that there's missiles in the legs instead of multi-drones, so it seems like it should have been some sort of a weapon, but even in the animation, that's a multi-drone charger. So it kind of is what it is, although, you know, I'm sure lots of people are a little bit bummed out about that. Now this piece is up right now because I just yanked the gun out. We'll put that back down. And let's take a little bit closer look at the gun. Here it is detached from the back plate. Now I've got the fixed posed hand meant for holding the gun, which does an infinitely better job than the articulated hand does. With the articulated hand, you can kind of make it work, but it's a sad sight and it's gonna be frustrating to you. So just go ahead, pop the handle op open, uh, loop in the handle, which is a little scary because the handle feels like it's soft and very thin plastic. Uh, and the grip area is very tight that it has to slide through. Once you get it through though, it's gonna be on there nice and solid. You're just gonna reach over, pop this out, pop that hand on. Now, unlike the Draken toys, these hands are the same size, at least as the articulated hands and look just as good. And there you go. Now you've got your toy on the display stand, holding the gun, whatever you choose to do with it. And now would be a good time to take advantage of that really crazy sweep you can get uh, and whatever pose you want to pull off. The world is your oyster in gear walk mode. Let's continue on to Batroy. We have had a number of different VF31 toys, including Siegfried and now the Kairos toy. The head I find least attractive is Messer's VF31F. It's just a little too bug-like for me. And the head I find most attractive now is the simple Kairos head. I think it's got just the amount of detail and a very clean look to it. As you can see, the head is on a ball joint, very attractive. There is this uh, laser on top that pivots. Uh, they give you a replacement laser. I don't really see why you're gonna need it. And it didn't seem like it was in a fragile position at any point to me. And it doesn't pop off very easily. So I guess good things there. A little QC issue though. I do have this flap right here that doesn't stay up very well on my Kairos toys. It's not as much of a problem on my Siegfried toys. And obviously it'd be pretty easy to uh, do something minimalistic that would fix that. Now, if we look at the canards on the shoulders, they're a little bit bigger than they are on the Siegfried toys. And that's gonna give you some clearance issues as you transform the toy. It's, it's not really a problem, but it is something you wanna keep an eye on so you don't ding up the edge of the canard or scratch some paint somewhere. Now, if we turn the toy sideways, you can see still a ton of back kibble here. The wing shape works just fine. It's not really changing anything in Batroid mode. So good things there. Obviously, that is a lot of back kibble. The toy has ratcheted hip joints, so it's not a problem. They also separate away from the body. They come out as part of transformation and then give you this super wide range of motion, which is awesome for dynamic posing. You do, like other VF31 toys, get a dagger. You can house the dagger in this little side compartment and you fold it over. 
and you just put it in place like that, fold it down, and there you go. It's concealed and you can pull it out later for fun. You can transform it back to fighter mode. So that's a pretty cool little gimmick too. All right, let's take a look at articulation. In Macross Delta, there's a scene where Aaron's having a flashback to his VF-31A days, and they've got the mission pack folded up underneath, uh, as I recall at least. You can't do that with the toy. You can remove the mission pack entirely, uh, or you could just leave it there and not let it bother you. It does pivot individually on either side. There's a twist in the middle and the ability to pivot right in the middle. All of that's pretty cool stuff. Moving down, you do have a shoulder joint that goes up and down and twists around, which is all very good. You can come out away from the body at the shoulder as well. You have that nice double jointed elbow and a very stiff twisting point in the arm, as well as, of course, that ability that we saw earlier to swing the gun around and the ball jointed hands, which swing around. Now, again, you have that finger, that one finger that doesn't articulate, which is just so bizarre. I don't know why they haven't addressed that at some point. We saw the ball jointed head, we saw how good the hips are, and we saw the twist point, and then the other twist point. The knee can extend one more click from here to get really dynamic like crouching poses, and you've already seen how dynamic those feet are. So this toy really delivers boatloads of fun while being incredibly attractive to boot. So high praise there. I very much enjoy these toys in Batroid mode. I thought that back kibble would be a hindrance. It's not. These toys are a lot of fun. The display stand is very simple. Again, just this adapter here that locks it into place. It is secure once it's on there. No problem with your toy potentially falling off. You can do whatever you want with your feet. And given how dynamic this toy is, you can come up with some amazing poses. It's really going to brighten up your display case. Now, regardless of how you feel about Macross Delta, it is very easy for me to recommend this toy. It's got that military look to it, and it is just a quality toy overall. It's a shame that Bandai made this so difficult to come by. I very much hope we get an Arid Molders version of it. Like I said, we see Arid with it in the show, so hopefully that comes out and is more readily available to people. Check out anymoon.com for my full article, and as always, thanks for watching.